Hi everybody, Michael Gaio here, the e-media editor at Athletic Business, and today we're coming to you from Owatonna, that's the heart of Minnesota, and the home of the Cybex Manufacturing Facility. Today we're lucky enough to get the opportunity to head inside the factory and meet up with the folks from Cybex and Ron Hemmelgarn, an international club owner, as he tours the facility. So without any further ado, let's go meet up with Ron. I want to see the quality, the, this facility, the state of the art, the robotics, uh, the consistency of product, uh, all the things that you look for in manufacturing. Uh, I've been in this business for 48 years. Years ago, uh, everything was sort of hand built. Uh, there was no consistency. You, you built one bench press, the next one you built might have been off a little bit from the other one, and so everything was a hand built thing. Today, uh, this plant is totally automated, so the consistency is there. So whether you bought the first bench press or you bought the hundredth bench press, they're all identical. And the only thing that's different is the color that they've put on. Pretty excited about it. I've been looking forward to it for quite a while to come out and see it. And uh, so I guess I'm in for a real treat. factory since 2007. Uh, this factory is uh, 340,000 square feet. That's eight acres under one roof. Very vertically integrated as you can see as we go through a lot of different technologies. Our philosophy at Cybex was to invest in automation and technology to control cost of goods and this factory is a result of that. So We're running uh, 60 arc trainers a day right now is our production rates. Um, and this cell will be doing close to 800 to 1,000 parts a day just to keep up with daily production. Is that, of is that 60 throughout three shifts or is that one shift? Yeah, that's, that's throughout three shifts. So in a 24 hour period, we're producing 60 arc trainers a day, have been since Thanksgiving. This is our busy, busy season. And this, this factory as a, as a whole is doing over 200 pieces a day of strength equipment and arc trainers combined. You can see this is roll forming, so that hydraulic uh, uh, pressure on those dies, um, all CNC, and it'll put that gentle radius into that into that part. Wow. Now the old factory at what size? The old factory was 200,000 square feet, so we added 70% more facility, and we feel we can do about 325. Machines a day out of this factory are close to 200 million annual revenue out of this plant. We're going to go look at a two blazer. Now you can see versus yeah. machining. Oh yeah. Now this machine, even though it's an investment of over, you know, close, yeah, to, close to a million. Made in Germany. Yeah, uh, it's actually oh, northern Italy. Italy. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah, when we did the research on on uh, two blazers, BLM, which is northern Italy, was about a year and a half ahead of the Japanese. And we liked it better than the uh, Trumps coming out of Germany. And uh, we also like the fact that there's probably 30 of these in a, in a 100 mile radius of the Twin Cities. So servicing oh, them is, is there. We got a, a service uh, outlet right in Minneapolis. We can get great service on it. So if you look here, 20 foot uh, tubes coming direct from the steel mill are just loaded on one side of the machine. It'll grab it, feed it through. When it makes all the parts, it'll shoot back, grab the next one that's waiting on those uh, yeah. on those uh, feelers there. So, 24/7. Now, also look at the quality of the steel that we're using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, the thickness is great. Yeah, well, it's 11 gauge, no rust, no flash rust. We we, we uh, get it shipped direct from the tubing mill, and, and uh, all U.S. steel lock joint is in South Bend, Indiana, and uh, hot roll pickled in oil. No well flash, I mean we start with the highest quality steel. Well you have to. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna show you where we we got a steel yeah. truck in the steel bay right now. So here we designed the factory. Trucks back right in, we close the door. Of course when you're in Minnesota it's 20 below, yeah. you don't want that door open. So we got the steel bay deep enough where we can bring the trucks in. This truck just came from uh, Indiana, it's about uh, about seven hour drive. We just got done unloading it. You can see the big overhead crane yep. as a 10 ton capacity. We, we unload these big uh, bundles of steel from our flatbed trucks and, and you can see uh, 
even though we're doing we're doing 90 million a year out of this factory, 200 machines a day. This is it for what we sit on for steel. We bring it in just in time. When they run it, we keep our inventory down. Uh, we turn it very quickly. Very, very automated. Very automated. They spent a lot, a lot of money on on uh, these machines to make it automated, and uh, I, uh, I'm very, very impressed. This is some of the uh, more automation. This machine is, uh, this actually is a Mitsubishi, so this is made in Japan. This is a, a flat laser, so I'm sure you've seen this technology oh, yeah. before, but we're, we're cutting parts out of it. In this case, it's 11 gauge steel. This is all programmed by the computer, sent wireless to the controller, and then the laser will cut that and probably take uh, probably 20 minutes to cut that sheet out. That's kind of neat. Here's where we're bending, uh, two bending uh, steel. So what Mike is doing is he's getting ready to put an eagle weight frame into that uh, CNC two bender. Now you know eagle has that nice gentle radius on the side of the tube. This is how we put that ra gentle radius into that straight section of that tube. We call it push bending. So the machine will actually push against that roller as it's drawing it out, putting a nice cosmetic radius on the edge of that tube. Previous to this machine, we were doing this part in three different operations. This machine allows us to do it in one operation, therefore taking costs out of the part. Once again, look at the quality of the, of the steel. It's very particular. Things I was looking at is, is the weld, for example. Is there consistency in it? Many when they're doing hand welding, you lose your consistency, so it's sort of rough and so on. When we started implementing robotic welding, we retrained our own workforce to run the robots. We sent them to training, they know how to program them, and we instituted our first robotic welder in about 2005. And, uh, and uh, this, is, this is one of them. You can see welding is happening on the other side. Roy's loading and unloading on this side. When Roy's done, he hits a button, and uh, that lets the robot know he's out of the work area. And then when the robot's done, that turntable will turn 180 degrees, and oh, that robot, will, okay. the robot will just keep welding. So it's on the other side. So when we were doing these by hand, probably five years ago, a cycle would be about 45 minutes. The robot's doing them in 13. Really? So wow. And that's a big problem. But you're moving a lot of that. 60 a day. Yep. is where we're at with uh, our trainer production. And if, when you're in a competitive business, as you are, you've got to make it as most efficient as you can. That's right. And you built something that's ultra modern versus many places, yeah. so but your quality control had to go up a lot. It did. Yeah. It did. And the, and the flow of the product, how it flows through production. Yeah. Um, the automation, the technology, controlling cost of goods. There's an investment that Cybex made that pays off in the long run. Your average workforce, how long have you been with you? Well, What's we got your a, oldest guy? Well, we've got we've got uh, employees that have been with us over 30 years. Yeah, yeah we, we uh, so started in Otana in 1981. Okay. okay, and we've had employees that, that started with the company in 1981. But, but our workforce is very seasoned. We have a lot of 15-year, 20-year, 25-year individuals. Oh, yeah. and, we don't have, and we don't have a lot of turnover. Well, that's good. That says a lot. Well, what I like, for example, the powder coating, if let's just say you ordered 10, piece, 10 machines, they're powder coating all 10 of those machines in the same run. So you got consistency in your colors and so on. All our products are welded, and they get staged here to go on our paint line. Now that chain is our paint line. So we hang it on here, right. and in four hours, that equipment is fully painted, cured, and delivered on the other side of the factory and assembly to be built. So, so that chain's like a half a mile long, and it's a four-hour cycle to get to our, our paint process. Now your plates, those are all paint black, or are they powder yeah. coated? Yeah, they're powder coated black, and we do that with an automated uh, uh, powder coating booth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those aren't colored. Those are always they're always yeah. black. But we uh, c customization of our equipment. We go into oh, twelve yeah. colors a day. Yeah, I know. And I think uh, and I think it's neat how you can. If do I remember that, right, I think you like the different colors, right? Yeah, so you like absolutely. the bright colors. Yeah. Well, like we built all those clubs in Mexico. We use all different colors. Right. So some of the Cybex clubs. Yeah. I mean, we use I mean, five, six different colors. So. 
I'm gonna show you how we do that when we paint. We're gonna we're gonna kind of walk the paint line. Now, when we do weights, we don't shot blast them. But this machine right here, uh -huh. it's the first. That chain goes right through the center of that machine. That's a shot blast system. So all of our equipment, instead of the in the old plant. All the equipment was kind of hand ground and prepped prior to painting because you got to get all that weld slag and everything off the machine. It's all been automated and the quality has uh, definitely increased and we'll look at the substrate quality of, the, of our equipment prior to painting. Those are little steel BBs and that's what, it's, instead of sandblasting, that's a little steel BB. But you're reclaiming now. Oh right? yeah, it goes, there's a big auger system. so. Those big wheel braider motors, 8,000 pounds of that are, are sprayed at that equipment a minute. 8,000 pounds a minute as it goes through the blast cabinet. And then that steel shot goes all the way back up to the hopper and keeps going until it just gets, it keeps going until it gets so small it gets filtered out as dust. And we, just, we just keep re recycling. <laughs> How many recycles can you get out of the beam? Well, we're probably adding a, a barrel a day. Really? Is that all? Yeah. 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 Quite impressive. Yeah. But you can see how when we designed this line, we started from scratch. We designed it to be able to do 18 inch weights, full, we can load this whole line with, with weights. It uh, has the uh, conveyor system to be able to support that. Um, it's very efficient. You can't even hardly walk through the line. It's so, it's so dense with, 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 with weights. Now this is where we're getting the parts extra clean. This is a 125 foot, seven stage wash system. And as it, that product goes through, different cleaning and decreasing and rinsing operations are happening. In stage five, we have a iron phosphate coating that goes on for rust protection. Um, this system that you see is one of the nicest paint systems in Southern Minnesota, and certainly one of the best in our industry, if not the best oh, yeah. in our industry. I can see that. See, we got two two operators that do the left side, two operators that do the right side. When they want to switch a color, they have 24 colors here to switch in and out of on a push of a button. So we got, we got to hang enough gap so that the powder doesn't drift to the, the previous color, which usually is about a 15 second, half a half a minute. And they can be going from red to white to blue to green. And each one of those colors has a different line going underneath the concrete, that gun, will all have that flexibility. And over here you can see all our colors are all fluidizing. They're all in a different vat. This happens to be white texture. And you can see that's a powder, but it looks like a liquid. We got all that compressed air coming up through the through the powder, so it's fluid, all ready to go. So when he hits that button, that powder goes through its unique powder line underneath the concrete to that gun are ready to go. So we got yellow going, green going, all these colors are, are ready to go at one time. I love the fact that they are actually barcoding everything. They know if, if there is a failure, when the failure of that machine, what time was that part put on that machine, who put the part on the machine. They can isolate it down to an individual that maybe didn't do it properly and so on. That's good. Our quality systems at Cybex are, are all operator driven. We don't have an inspection department that's no. out here approving them. We train and certify all our operators. Let's say they didn't do it right. You know who? Meeting with them, or how, yeah. how does that work? What's, what's, what's neat about Cybex, everything's barcoded. Every operation that's done on the factory is done on the barcode. So we know who did it, and we know what time they did it, what day they did it, and so on. It's, it's not, it's, it's for, a, for healthy improvement, you know, right. so they, people will realize that. So if you have an art trainer in your facility, say, and you give us the serial number, I can tell you what day it was welded, who welded it, who assembled it, I can tell you when it was painted, I can tell you the humidity of this room when it was painted, the temperature of the oven, all that is traceable back to our serial number. So what we have here is we have parts coming out of the paint environmental room that was just painted. It's going up into an oven. That oven's at 375 degrees. We'll go around that conveyor for about 45 minutes. 
come down right over here all cured and ready. So this will be really hot, but it's cured. So the product comes out of the cooling tunnel, up over the aisle, and then over to our assembly department where we where we uh, assemble the equipment for shipment. So our trainers go on the line on this side, and then as they go down, more components get added to the uh, added to the machine. This guy's pressing bearings. And what kind of bearings are, are those? Those are radial bearings. Radio, radial bearings. Okay. Our trainers, all the you know articulating surfaces are bearings, and that gives it the feel. Uh, this gentleman is Eddie. He'll add toys and gears and belts and the Eddie current brake and the lower board. It's all built offline, and then it's tested by uh, the computer for resistance. So you can see these are the insides of your arc trainer. Built like tanks, arc trainers you do very well in the field, as you know. Yep, um, absolutely. They'll take them one by one, first in, first out. So they'll take the one that's closest to this end, up over the top. You can see he just he just put it onto the arc trainer. He's going to get ready to grab the next one, so let's stay out of his way. He just got done doing the operator test on it, and then we fully assemble them, and we break them down after we test them for shipment. And uh, this is how they're packaged. You can stack them too high, you can stack them three high in a warehouse. So product is coming down, and we'll see the different assembly lines for strength as we walk. So it's assembled, and then it's staged, and then uh, those, ten, uh, those ten shipping doors are where we ship our product from. So you can see how we laid the factory out. We weld it, we paint it, we assemble it, and we ship it. All linear, north to south. And that conveyor does most of the material handling from one side of the building to the next, so very efficient with the, with the layout. We're going to circle back around and look at the shipping department okay. when we conclude our tour, but I'm going to take you in the digital printing lab where we do all of our own uh, customization decals, all our own placards, all our own language decals, all those. Yeah, that's good. We built this room and also the equipment in it. This is where we do all our own digital printing, yep. and we do all our customization decals for our customers that like customization. Yep. In fact, you can see some of the the guys like to put the logo on the wall when they do one. So you can yep. see we've done a lot for you know, Georgia. There's the Steelers, Redskins. Um, Absolutely. And we do all that here. This is a digital printer here. We got some uh, CNC cutter. Yep. We laminate it. We cut it, and uh, this is all implemented in March of 2013. Well, I'm very impressed with the whole operation. I am very impressed with the fact that they're building this stuff uh, to order, moving it through within 10 days from the time they ship, which is quite amazing. They have no excess inventory, and everybody is made to order. They can take and make it any color you want, and they can do it right on the, uh, the uh, spray uh, uh, powder coating. And so we're doing 60 arc trainers a day, 300 arc trainers a week, and this is it for finished goods. I mean, we build them and we awesome. ship them. I think they've done a fantastic job. I've been to a lot of plants. This is very, very, very automated. A lot of expense was put in to build this, but I think they're getting it back in quality control, also in labor cost. Um, pretty impressive, pretty impressive. Obviously a very impressive facility here in Owatonna, and we'd like to thank all the folks at Cybex and Ron Hemmelgarn for allowing us and you inside for a great look at a great facility.